Hey guys, so uh, here I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Maya Tune Shader and how it works. And um, so we're going to use a couple shapes here. We do have a regular hard surface house. I did uh, convert the normal hard surface. And then we have a more of a spherical object we can play with. Now using the shader, there's a couple of ones that are custom only to this particular uh, type of tool. And there's other ones which use the ramp shader, which pretty much is a lot of what the tune shader uses. That ramp shader allows us to create a color variant based on brightness, based on light angle, and this allows us to be able to uh, really get that flat tone look, saturated flat tone watercolor type of feel. Still can give volume to an object, but it's uh, pretty cool. In this case, we'll select the house here. We'll apply a nice little white uh, texture to him. You can mess with the outer color. We can change the outer color to gray if we want to. And you'll see we have outer glow color. We can make that white so you can play with these as much as possible and you can get some interesting effects and you'll see that it's very very bright and glowy so let's go in here and lower the glow and you can keep these as you render and um, this was the little icon here to keep image and then we hit render again see it's very flat not a lot of silhouette going on we can do white render it all the way white and it gives you that like flat type of color that we're looking for for that kind of tune look almost uh, very two-dimensional in a way so Maya tries to give you that ability to to follow that now that's just it's basic that's just it's basic material there so what we're gonna do is we'll try another one here this is a light angle so we'll click on this one and you'll see we have two colors set in here and what you want to do is set them both to smooth for interpolation this allows them to uh, relate to each other a little bit better a smoother transition as I move it up you'll see that we have two different color types. You'll see a little bit of gray in here. Since it's hard surface, it's kind of hitting these polys and stopping a little bit, so it's not quite as organic. So let's apply that same material to this guy over here in 3D space. So I made an orb in here so we can see a little bit more of the volume and the color control. I'm gonna set an existing one here. So let's go to uh, solid shader two here go in here take a look and you can see the flat one there so let's also go to uh, that's not the one I was looking for I was looking for the uh, two-tone here da -da 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 -da. light angle shader number two there we go so this guy here you'll see names to it pays to name your materials ladies and gentlemen <laughs> we'll call this demo and you can see now as we render we can see that slight gray in there. We can increase that. And you'll also see it over here. Now you'll, you'll notice some of you guys may not get this to show up. A lot of that has to do with your graphics card. OpenGL, a little real-time playback here. It's not coming in, I shouldn't say playback, but uh, demonstration of what you're working with. It doesn't always show up. You'll see that nice little gray in there. Pretty cool, huh? We can even add another color if we want to. So we can do like a, a different variants of gray or maybe just a little blue hint in there. And this guy, as you make new interpolate nodes, um, excuse me, and color nodes in here, you'll notice the interpolation will transfer over. So this one was already smooth, so when I made a new one, smooth came in to the blue channel. And we can render that and see what it looks like. Pretty cool. See, you can see blue on both. It's a little bit harder fade here because it's a hard surface object. But you'll see that this ram shader gets the blue on some of the highlight areas, which is kind of nice, which is kind of cool. So you can see you have two different colors. Pretty nift. Did I just say nift? I did. All right, so let's go to another one here. This is, uh, we'll keep that guy selected. We'll grab this guy, make a new shade on him, and then we'll make another one. So we can change the color here. We'll do red, and then we do want to put a nice, smooth interpolation. Now you'll notice you can control transparency. You can control incandescence, how strong the color is going to be. Right now it's black, which is fine. If we make that any color, you just got to make sure the incandescence, incandescence is really strong. So you just got to be careful with that. We have an ambient color also, specular roll-off, specular uh, color, and a reflectivity. Now specular roll-off works a little bit like your curve editor in, in uh, Photoshop, which allows you to control the black and white. It's a little bit more powerful. Um, it can give you some uh, nice gradient control here. It just being a little more powerful is just in 3D space, but the concept is still the same. You can also punch in your selected position and selected value, and you can smooth between these specular changes. All right, so let's go up here. I'm going to switch this. This is smooth already. Let's grab this guy here. Let's make him smooth, 
and let's grab the gray guy oops let me get rid of him for a minute he's the default one he never had smooth so we'll make him smooth there and now we can see the results as we render this out yay pretty cool so that is our little ramp shader and we can control the output and this is what i meant earlier by light angle facing angle brightness and even normalized brightness this will try to normalize everything over a surface but this one allows you to customize it for a light angle and a facing angle and this kind of gives you a cool effect um, you can have it based on where the lights at that it will uh, shuffle your primary colors um, everything that's on the right will be the main one uh, and then everything else after that will kind of fall in place but these can control how those relate so we can do facing angle and that white will always face the facing angle and the white will always face the light angle in this particular case which is kind of cool. All right, so we messed with this guy a bit, and you can uh, even mess with a little bit more with these properties. This is one's a dark profile threshold, color based on view angle with the edges, which is kind of nice. You get a little, little, little uh, dark angle here, but this one also does rim light, which is kind of cool. So we can select rim light here and see what that looks like. All it really is is just playing with the interpolation on this guy. And you can see the only reason there's a rim here is because of incandescence. Kind of playing with that. So it's just little custom presets, I guess you could say, up here on the shelf. But you also have presets down here. You can do ramp cartoon, and we can set that to replace or just 50%. In this case, I'll do replace. And you'll see literally we'll get like that cartoon look, which is kind of cool. Look at that. There's a whole bunch of different color nodes in here to play with and even incandescence has got some in there so he's got like a fake tune line on him so you can actually fake it with your incandescence if you want to and your color variance over here um but if you don't if you do want to have a little bit more control and you do get a good amount of control it's just a little bit trickier when it comes to rendering in mental ray you can create an ink line let's choose the red one we had earlier and I'm going to create an ink line here. So add a, two, uh, a new tune outline. And you'll see that we have a tune outline. Wherever we turn the camera, that tune outline is going to be visible, which is kind of cool. And if I render it, you'll see it more distinct. See it right there? A little tune outline. Kind of nice. So we can see it in context here of our environment. There's the tune. Hi, everybody. I'm a tune. Now, you've got to be careful when it comes to hard surface objects because it won't always relate really well. I did a test on some models a while back for a cinematic and it's tricky because it will actually try to put the ink line on everything and you don't always want it on everything especially the interior stuff. Keeping thing all everything one mesh does help but if you have multiple pieces you just gotta be careful you have to go in there you might have to detach them might have to add them new material and it add its own separate ink line so you can have a little bit more control so let's grab this guy let's add an ink line to him and you can see it on this guy and this actually looks like it turned out pretty well and i think part of that is yay it did and part of that is because he is one piece which makes it easier for my to interpret where things begin and end because it's placing these on the very edges of the faces outlining your normals is kind of how you can think about it and uh and we can control that variant of that shape if we want to. Now you have to be careful. If you have a lot of these, they can bog down a scene. You just you just got to be aware of it because it is a paint effect. And anytime you use paint effects in large amounts, things can slow down. All right, so we got a little ink line there. Now watch this. This part's kind of cool. So let's go to our ink line properties, and it's a little tricky. So you got to kind of get in there real close to grab him. He's a fusty little guy. Usually I just grab both of them and just deselect. Or you can just go into your outliner, grab that paint effects, because he does get listed. So we got this guy here, and he's all cool, but watch this. This is cool. So we can actually control the thickness of our line. Kind of nice. And we can control the line offset, so we want it to float above the object, like an old Warner Brothers background. Pretty cool. You can do control Z on that guy. Don't necessarily want that to float. Um, there's a line offset map, which we don't really get into in this particular one. I don't want to get too much into buttonology, but I want to show you some of the cool stuff you can do. Line end thickening here. Now this relates a little bit more with a uh, non-linear type of object. In our case, it's just the sphere, which goes in a complete circle. And uh, you can play with that even with the house and get some cool effects. 
But messing with the thickness really does help, like in this case with the house. It's a little bit thick, and we won't be able to see the details. So we'll just decrease the width of our line a little bit. And you can make it really barely visible if you want. And with that, you can also mess with our, uh, let me see here, line end thinning here and here. We can mess with that. You'll see it thin. See that as it comes to the angles. This is what I was talking about. Harder to see here. Line opacity. So you can make it very slightly transparent or completely transparent. Pretty cool. All right. So that's some of the basics there of how to mess with your uh, scene. You also can mess with your border lines. You can do the shader boundary edge and shader boundary mixed together and the shader boundary what this does let's do a quick render on the very edge of the shade it won't the ink won't show up on all your angles so we change that up if we put it back to uh, our open edge and we go and you can actually turn it off if you want to and what we can do is also thicken up our line width here. Doo -doo -doo. I think it was too small for us to actually see that effect. So now it's a little bit thicker there. Yay. And uh, intersecting lines we can turn on. you got to be careful because sometimes intersecting lines, it will go across itself. It may even cross over a polygon um, that you didn't necessarily want, depending on the complexity of the model. I'll turn that off. I, a lot of times I do not keep that on at all. Um, I'll turn off line end thickening. And that's about it for this one. So let's go and um, close this out for a second. I'm going to show you one more feature, which is pretty kick butt. So we got the ink here. Watch this. So we're going to go in here and we can add a thing called a deformer or a linear, I should say, a modifier. I'm used to saying deformers all the time, but this modifier can grab the ink and we deselect the orb, and I'm going to add a modifier. And what this modifier does, this allows us to get an ink thickness, and you won't really see if it's tiny, but if we go in here, hit the R key and increase it, you'll see that you can get, even do a non-linear um, type of uh, scale, you can see you can get some cool effects. Look at that, pretty nice. Get a nice little thick ink line. You can put multiple ones. And you got to be careful. You have a lot of these. It can get kind of boggy. It can get kind of crazy. But this allows us to get the nice tune effect we've always dreamed of. Notice I'm increasing on the X and Y, and we'll get like a thicker shot there. Now, the cool thing about this, as I turn the camera, that's going to hold. Look at that. That'll keep that ink line the whole time. Pretty nice. And when you do have it on your model, and say you're getting ready to rig it, <clears throat> you need to parent that uh, modifier to that bone system, to that area, to that geometry, if it's a robot geometry, if it's a rig smooth bind, to that bone system. So you don't lose that angle, because you will lose it. I can literally move him, and that incline will come with him, and it'll go away. So you just got to keep that in mind. All right. Cool. So those are some cool stuff working with the uh, tune shader in Maya. And when it comes to Metal Ray, you do have to be aware that if I render this in Metal Ray, um, you could lose your ink line definitely because it's a paint effect. The way to keep your ink line is you want to go in here and you want to convert and modify your paint effects into a polygon object. And uh, if you do, you could smooth it, but remember this is pretty heavy. If you have a lot of ink, it's going to give you a lot of trouble. Um, ink lines by default, uh, people, the people who made Maya, don't assume that you're, if you're doing a tune look, that you're going to need Mental Ray or want Mental Ray. But to do so, you'll have to smooth this guy out or you'll have to uh, ch convert him to polygons, excuse me, convert him to polygons and smooth him out to be able to get him to render because by himself he won't render as a paint effects object. All right, that's about it. Cheerio.